Hey guys, Tim Trich here with Ethernet Blueprint. Welcome to video number seven of our eight part series. That's right, we are getting so close and we're gonna drive this thing home by talking about Unify Protect and their cameras. Now, if you're new to this series or you just stumbled upon this video, what we've actually done is create an eight part video series all geared towards the Unify newbie. So if this is you and you're kind of learning this stuff with Ubiquity for the first time and trying to decide if this is the system for you, I encourage you to start at the beginning of the series because you are literally who the series is designed for. So um, before we get started, I do want to do a quick recap of what we've done so far. So if you have just watching this for the first time, you kind of understand what the series is about. And then we'll go ahead and dive into the content. Let's get started. So video number one was really focused on who is Unify even for? And it's an important question to ask because this is different stuff than what you go buy at a local store and set up that way. So we really talked about the components that make up a Unify network. We talked about how they all connect together. And I even make some general recommendations on equipment that I like to use in my builds to hopefully maybe get you started with yours. Now, video number two is all about the research. So we actually go on to the Unify store and I show you how to find information, how to look up the specifications, how to get pricing together, how to do uh, installation instructions, just to kind of arm you with that information so you guys can start planning your network and figuring out what this thing's gonna run you and cost-wise and how it all installs, okay? Video number three, we actually build a network. I actually build one right for you. We get all the equipment online and I show you two different ways that you can do that. Um, one with your laptop and one with your smartphone. Now, video number four is all about VLANs. A lot of you are here and looking at Ubiquity because of its VLAN capabilities. So we actually build out some VLANs, assign VLANs to Wi-Fi, we assign them to switch ports, and we talk through that entire process, okay? Now, video number five is all about guest networks. Now, Ubiquity does a couple things a little bit different when it comes to guest networks, and they have a couple, I don't know, cool, maybe gimmicky features. And so I thought we'd dedicate an entire video to just talking about guest Wi-Fi and how that works with Ubiquity. Number six was all about the firewall rules. It's the longest video in the series, guys, because there's a lot of information to cover. But we take these VLANs that we built in video four and we secure them in video six, step by step, I give you all of the instructions on how to build a really great template or blueprint network that you guys can use in your home, maybe just making a little bit of tweaks for you. I even give you all of the information in a downloadable file that you can take with you so you don't have to go you know, stumble on the video each time. Now, video number seven, today's video, is going to be about Unify Protect. We're going to be talking about how to get Unify Protect running. We're going to talk about NVR options and we're going to get our camera online so it's talking to the NVR. Then we're going to focus on video number eight after that and that's just going to be how to set your settings, where to set motion zones, notifications. Um, we're going to touch base on more of the settings aspect of it so you guys can get yours set up if that's the route you're going. So hopefully that helps you guys. Um, we're excited to bring this series to you. I think it's going to be really good for anybody who's just learning this stuff for the first time, but it is a lot of content. So if that's you, go start at the beginning and work your way through. But let's go ahead and start talking about Unify Protect. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and dive in here. Now, before we get going with the configuration part of this, we need to just talk about the pieces that make up a Unify Protect system. These are the pieces you're going to need to be looking at and thinking about purchasing if you're even going to talk about this type of system. So if you look at the slide here, I just piece together a couple general requirements that you need to be looking at when doing a system like this. Now, obviously there's cabling and some other things not included in here, but let's just start on the left and work our way right and kind of talk through this a little bit, okay? So the first thing you're gonna need is some kind of uh, recorder, the NVR, okay? And Ubiquity gives you a lot of options for this, which we're gonna talk about in the next slide, but your recorder is gonna do two things. One, it's going to be the local storage for your recordings, okay? Ubiquity doesn't do any cloud storage. Everything is stored locally, so you can buy the size of hard drive you want, put it in the device, and that's where all your recordings are going to be recorded to, okay? So that's, that's its first role. Its second role is to actually run the Unify Protect software. So you need a specific device that can run that software and be storage, okay? So that's kind of part one. The second thing you're gonna need is a PoE switch, all right? And so um, I just have a couple pictures of some of Ubiquity's options here, depending on your needs. Um, but with your cameras, they will have a single ethernet cable run to each of the camera locations. 
and the other end of that cable will plug into a network switch. Now the switch is going to do two things. It's going to provide connectivity so it, your camera can get online and, and record and send recordings across the network. And it's also going to provide power. PUE stands for power over ethernet. So um, you're going to want to make sure your switch power requirements are, are covered um, based off of what kind of cameras you're going to get. And that's the last piece, right? You're going to need some kind of unified camera. Um, you can't use third-party cameras with Ubiquiti. It doesn't work. You're going to have to use one of their cameras. And they give you a lot of options here. We have doorbells. We have AI pro cameras, turret cameras, um, dome cameras, pan tilt zoom cameras, you name it. Lots of different options here. Um, so these are kind of the ingredients, if you will, that you're going to need to put together a system like this. And, um, and so I wanted to just make sure we went over that. So Unify gives you a lot of really great options for MVRs, and I've listed them here. This is literally every one that you can get as of today, July 2024. Um, now, I'm not gonna take a deep dive into each one of these or tell you which one to choose based off your situation. That's not what today's video is about. However, I did do another video on Unify Protect and the camera system and getting started with it, and I do talk about the NVRs in a lot more detail, when to choose one over the other, what the pros and cons are of each type of system. And um, so if that's something that you need to kind of do some more homework on and you wanna take a little bit deeper dive on this, I highly recommend watching that video and I've put a link down in the description for you. Okay, so the one thing you might notice with this slide, I actually stole this slide from that video, so if you watch it, it'll look a little familiar, but um, there's basically two camps, right? If you're just doing a camera system, they have standalone MVR systems with the Cloud Key MVR and MVR Pro, and or you can do what we're gonna be doing and using in today's video, and that's more of an NVR slash router gateway combo, okay? So the device we're gonna be setting up is the top right corner there, it's a UDM Pro. Um, for 379 has a hard drive bay. You can see the door that the hard drive goes into, and that's where we put our storage. And then the, this device can not only be our router and our gateway into all our firewalls and all our networking, but it can also run the Unify Protect software and store locally to the device. So it's kind of an all-in-one solution, which is why it costs a little bit more. It's doing a lot more things. So I just wanted to use this slide and call it out to you, um, just so you can kind of see what their NVR options are. Um, but again, for a little bit more deeper dive, maybe check out that other video. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about before we get into the configuration of everything is how this is connected, how it's physically set up um, so you guys can see that part. Because if you haven't watched video number three where we actually did this, you're not really gonna know how we're connected here. So I wanna just review that just real fast for you. So if you take a look at the slide here, we have each of the three components or recipe items that I talked about earlier in the slide we have our UDM Pro, which is our NVR slash router gateway. Okay, so it's going to be able to be where we store our recordings to. It's also going to be able to run the Unify Protect software. But in this case, it's also our router for our network. Okay, then we have that directly connected to our PoE switch. That was part two of the scenario. So this switch is actually providing both network connectivity and power to the devices we have on our network. And then in the lower right, or excuse me, lower left, you'll see we have a G5 turret camera. Now this is different. If you did watch video three, I was originally using a G3 bullet camera, but since the time of making this series, I'm actually upgrading my cameras. So I went ahead and just put one of the new cameras I bought um, on our little lab here. So that's been the only change from the earlier in the series. And I didn't want to go re-record the other part of the video just for that. So um, we are using a G5 turret camera and that's plugged into port one of our switch. So we're physically connected into the camera, into the switch, the switch into the MVR, and then the MVR has internet access. So let's go to the interface. And when I say go to the interface, we're actually gonna log into the controller software that is built into the UDM Pro. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started here. So we're gonna be accessing our UDM Pro through the Unify uh, cloud access. So the URL we're actually going to for this is unify.ui.com. Now I have multi-factor authentication turned on, so you're gonna hear that or see that here in just a second when I hit sign in. But when you go to that page, you'll sign in. Hopefully if you're at this point and you've watched the rest of the videos, we talked through signing in and turning on multi-factor authentication. And so it'll look a little like this. We'll click it there, prompts us. Yes, it's me. 
All right, and then we'll be in. So this is the interface for our UDM Pro, if this is the first time seeing it. Now we're on the OS settings, as you can see up here. Um, there's the network settings that we've been going over in our other videos here. Um, so that's where we would interact with our networking, our firewall rules, our devices, our switches, and things like that. But for this, we want cameras. And you can't really interface with your cameras in the network space. We need to install Unify for Tech. So in order to do that, we need to go over to our OS settings here. And you can see the different options that we have on the UDM Pro that we can install. So this is like door access. This is voice over IP phones. Um, inner space. There's just a lot of options here, but one of them is Unify Protect. So we're going to go ahead and click install to install that. And then some things will start to come to life and we'll be able to get our devices online. All right, guys, there you see it. Now it's we have our Unify Protect. It's installed. The software itself so Unify Protect is software. So it's showing as up to date, just like your Windows computer or MacBook needs updates. Um, this does as well. So it's completely up to date. If it wasn't, it would either install the updates as part of installing it, or it would give you an update button just like over here on the network and give you the ability to manually update um, it as well. So now that we've installed it, we have this nice little Unify Protect button over here. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And it's going to take us into the interface of Unify Protect, okay? So the top part is our dashboard. You all go kind of go down through the menus here. So the top part is our dashboard. We don't really have anything to show you right now because we don't have any cameras. But once we adopt things, it'll start to come to life. The next one is our Unify devices. So you can see we have our G5 turret camera ready to adopt, which we'll get into in just a minute. Um, and then we have some playback. So once we get cameras adopted, well, this is where we would go to watch our recorded content and, and do whatever we need to with that. Then there's like a detection. So when, it, when a camera detects motion, it'll actually show the different detections in here. So it kind of makes it easier to find clips. You're looking for a car that drove by or when the, when the guy showed up to deliver your package, you know, something like that. It'll show up in your detections and give you some timestamps. Then we have our system logs. So right now, the only thing in our logs is that there's a camera ready to adopt. And then we have our settings, and this is where we can go kind of tweak things and, and make it our own, and we'll, we'll get there as well. So for this video, what we need to do is we need to get our camera online and, and adopt it. And the adoption process is just like it is with Unify access points. The access points, once it's plugged into the network, it'll automatically go to the network that it's supposed to be on. And you can see we have a 192.168.3. address here, okay, so we're... If you've followed along in the series, our camera is in VLAN 3, okay? So we're going to go ahead and adopt this camera, uh, and it is on the camera VLAN. So we'll go ahead and say click to adopt and do that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and enable smart detection. That's it. Basically, it says it, it can tell you if it's looking at a person or an animal or a car, a vehicle, which is nice. Okay. So you can see our little preview here, what we got going on right now. This is just looking at my water heater in my rack. Uh, sorry, I don't have a prettier view to give you, but that's what we got. You can see our cameras online. So this is just a little pop-out window, so we can actually X out of that. And there's our camera. So when we click into it, that's what made that pop up. And we have a dashboard now. So the dashboard can, you know, give us, let us go to live view. It tells us our camera capacity that we have as far as like, storage goes showing that we've used 2.26 gig of our 900 gigabit we have a one terabyte hard drive in here so you can see how much storage you have left um, and what kind of capacity you got which is nice how so how much camera capacity you can put in your in your connect it to your controller which is really good now there is a cloud archive that Ubiquity offers now. This is very new. I'll probably do a video on it specifically. So I'm not gonna dive into it in this video since we're kind of just talking about Unify for newbies, but this is something I need to look into and it's interesting. Um, I think one of the big things that people didn't like about Ubiquity's camera system was you weren't able to offload, um, like for example, if I wanted to keep these recordings 
and update the drive and you know but keep these they didn't really give you a good way to do that um, so looks like they've kind of uh, if, if this is doing what I think it's doing where you can actually archive your your data you know potentially it allows you to store some of this a little bit off-site so that's kind of cool all right so let's just go ahead and click through here a little bit so we're gonna click on the camera we have a couple different options up here the recording mode settings uh, you know, and we're going to, all of this will actually go through on, um, video eight, but while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and name the camera. So we'll just call this basement rack camera. That way we, we have it a name, we give it a name and we just say apply. You can see that it just automatically changes the name here, which is really cool. <laughs> if we had multiple cameras, as you hovered over them, you get a little preview window of what, you're, what they look at, which is kind of nice. Let's see if there's any detections. Now, it hasn't really detected anything yet. Obviously, there's nobody walking around down there. So, all right. So, we now have our controller online. Our controller is up to date, and we have our camera adopted. That is going to wrap up this video. Now, a little bit shorter, and that's okay. We're going to cover really how to set up your Unify Protect system how to tweak settings in your camera. We're gonna set up motion zones. We're gonna talk about um, notifications. You can be alerted on motion and we'll talk through um, some of those settings, but we're really gonna really dive into the controller a little deeper and show you guys uh, how to generally set things up. That way you have a starting point and then you can kind of tweak or change based off of your specific needs. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you guys in a future video.